So we're going to take another look at an Open Exchange application that's been written for the Open Exchange Developer Competition using the Integration APIs. And this time we're going to look at the Glossary plugin. As you can see, I've got just down here in my list. So this should be live by the time um, I finish this. Before I go any further, what I also wanted to show you, the Glossary plugin was actually written by the same developer, Cerebus, who developed the Glossary Converter. And if you go to his website, you'll see that he has a new version of the Glossary Converter. And I'm going to use that version in conjunction with the plugin when I demonstrate the tool now. So I wanted to show you this now because it is available for you to take. But this version of the converter is not free, so he's selling it as a charity edition. It's only seven euros, or he's looking for seven euros um, in order for you to donate it. He's only doing this until October. Um, but he's put so much work into this and it's such a great tool that I'd thoroughly recommend you go and download it. The improvements are massive. If you're somebody who uses terminology a lot, you will want this application. It's very good. But what I'm going to show you, to show you now is the Glossary plugin, not the converter. I'm just going to use this new converter because I want this, uh, some of the additional features that are in here. The ability to directly define field content types when creating a term base. I'm going to show you that as, as I do the conversion. So, I go to Studio. So to begin with, when you install it, you'll notice that the plugin puts a new um, group to the home ribbon called Project Glossaries. If you don't have a project selected, it's not active. But as soon as you select a project, it becomes active. And whatever you apply here, will oh, sorry, whichever whatever you click here will apply to whichever project you've got highlighted. The concept here is that the buttons on the left hand side are three different ways of creating a term base and having them added to a project automatically. So the first one is a new way of just creating a term base and adding it to your project. The second one actually calls out the multi-term wizard and allows you to configure the term base using all the ways you could do it in multi-term but from directly within studio without starting multi-term which is quite neat. And the third way allows you to just import a spreadsheet directly in and have it attached to the project as a term base without you having to do hardly any work at all. So let's just take a, have a look at how that, that works in practice. But I'll do it using a single file project. So many translators work perhaps just one at a time. I'll just let me delete the last one I did here. Let me just cross this up. Don't want those. So I'm going to open this single file here. English to German. I won't add a TM. So I open it up in the editor as if I was going to translate it. And we'll just check first of all, make sure that you can see there are no term bases in this project to begin with. So once it's opened, I can click on project settings and I've got no term bases in this project and no TMs, but I'm not interested in TMs. So I'll go back to my projects view. This should now be highlighting the active project, which is this single file project I've just created and I'm going to click on Add. It's automatically recognized the source and target languages. I can give it a name. I'll just call it Quick Term Base. I could add some custom fields here. So the field, I'll just show you what that looks like. So this would allow me to add um, different field names and I could just separate them by commas. So it's a little different to how you would do it in multi-term. It's a new and pretty simple way of adding fields if you wanted to do something slightly more complicated with your term base. But if all you want is a simple source terms and target terms, don't click on fields, just click OK. So that's two clicks, one on the ribbon, one on OK, OK, three clicks. Third click just to say OK, and that's it. My term base is created. Not complicated at all. And if I click over in the editor view and then click back on my project settings, you can see that I've now got a quick term base added and that's all ready to go. So let's have a look at the other ways. So the second one would use the multi-term wizard. So you will have all seen this before if you use multi-term. You can decide how you want to define your term base. So for the sake of um, simplicity, let's just pick a predefined bilingual glossary. So this comes with things that have been set up already. So we'll call this the multi-term wizard term base, just so you can see they're different inside the project settings. Click on next. My source and target languages are chosen already. 
point, uh, interesting point to note here is it doesn't use sublanguages by default, which is probably the right thing to do because it's going to be more e it's going to be easier to use it this way and mix and match terms with other projects that you might be working on. I've got a few descriptive fields. These are all the things that come standard with multi-term, and that's now added that term base directly to my project. If I click back on my editor again and go to my project settings, you can see now I've got a multi-term wizard term base in there as well. Now, the last way, a really impressive way, is to import a spreadsheet straight in. And for this exercise, what I'm going to do is I've got a spreadsheet here, just to show you what that looks like. This spreadsheet is not so simple, so it's got a few more fields in there, and it's also got some image fields in there, which I have stored in a folder, and, and it's a multilingual file. So I've got English, German, French, Spanish, Danish, Italian, and Swedish in there, so quite a lot. And the images are all in here. So you can see I've got these are all image files that are all in here. And the way this works is what the glossary converter is looking for is a folder with media underscore written in front of the file name. So my file is 002-glossary.xlsx and the media file containing all the images is media underscore 002-glossary. So very simple. That's just the syntax that the glossary converter is looking for because this particular process here uses the glossary converter to do that. So I click on import. I then go and pick my... Oop. What was that? My glossary. Does a quick analysis to see what fields are in there and sees if it recognizes them or not. In this case, because I've done this before, it's recognized every single field in there. If it didn't, you could add them. It would be no problem at all to add them. And I could change these, for example, if I didn't like that. I can right click on it. I can change the field content type. I can click on it to edit the values. So there's a number of different things I can do there. I click on OK. That's now importing and creating my term base for me. So that's now added the third term base to my project. And if I click over on the editors and the editor again, and I go into my project settings, you can see I've now got three term bases in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this third one the default, because I just want to show you a few things about that one, because this was the only one that was populated. The other two were empty, just as examples. So if I click on the term base viewer, I'll just lock that in place, maybe move it over a bit. So you can see, as I move down the terms, that term base has been created with all the images, with all the... Um, all the definitions and all the languages all installed in there perfectly. All straight from a spreadsheet or with just a couple of clicks. I mean it just doesn't get any easier than that. So that's pretty much the plugin. One last thing perhaps I could show you is that once you've finished, if you've just created a term base to, to work with because your client asked you to, um, to create a term base for them but they didn't have multi-term, when you finish your project you can click on the export button and this will export the contents of your term bases to a spreadsheet. So in this case if I was to do this now I've got three term bases attached so it's going to go through um, and it's going to convert all three to spreadsheets so I'd end up with three different spreadsheets and it has to work that way because actually I've got three different definitions for each one. So this one was the one that I imported from the spreadsheet I'll just click cancel on that because I don't want it to run through and really do it. Then it would do the second one, and this was the very simple one that we created to begin with. Just had a, a source language and a target language in it. And then the third one was the bilingual glossary, so that will have a few fields in there as well, um, which is the default fields for a bilingual glossary created by Multiterm. So simple as that. And that would create an um, Excel spreadsheet for you off each one. And that's it. That is the glossary plugin. Quite impressive.